Accidents do happen. We've heard it many times, and it's true. Accidents will continue to happen unless we do something about them. This accident and the vast majority of all accidents are the product of three human failings. Carelessness, negligence, or ignorance. In the air, there is no place for these shortcomings. And the Navy's flight safety record has shown this. In recent years, the number of flight accidents has had a marked decrease. However, once we are on the ground, Safety, for some reason, seems to lose its urgency. The result is a growing aircraft ground accident problem, aggravated by the congested conditions at air stations and the increasing complexity of ground equipment. While flight accidents have declined, ground accidents have increased, both in number and cost. They are now costing the Navy more than $10 million annually, enough money to equip an entire squadron with late model jet fighters. But the cost in money isn't all. Ground accidents have exacted a heavy price in squadron efficiency and combat readiness. A look in any Fazron or o &R shop will tell you why. Battered fuselages, smashed wingtips, propeller chewed surfaces, all keeping too many combat aircraft on the ground. Briefly, a ground accident is any mishap that damages an aircraft or injures personnel while there is no intent for flight. It can be an accident like the one this man is going to cause when the aircraft's wings are spread. Most of them, however, perhaps 90%, are associated with four types of ground operations improperly performed. Towing, Taxiing. Ground turn-up of engines. And servicing of aircraft. There are definite safety procedures for the performance of these operations, which are being ignored here. Too often these safety rules are viewed as petty annoyances and obstructions in getting the job done, instead of becoming working habits and a way of life on the flight line. The rigorous application by supervising officers and petty officers of three basic safety rules for ground operations would bring a drastic reduction in ground accidents. The rules for safe ground operations are use enough men for the job, use qualified men, and really supervise. Let's see how they apply to the typical operations on the flight line. First, use enough men for the job. Essential to every phase of ground operations, nowhere is this rule more important than in taxiing and towing operations, in the use of the NC-5 and other ground handling equipment. While taxiing, it is impossible for the man in the cockpit to accurately judge wing and tail clearances. In some cases, pilots cannot even see wingtips. This operation requires a complete ground crew. Two wing watchers walking slightly ahead of the plane's wingtips and a director in advance of the aircraft. Wing watchers are in a position to spot obstructions that cannot be seen from the cockpit. The director, using proper visual signals, guides the pilot. Like taxiing, towing requires two wing watchers and a director to guide the tow vehicle operator so that he can keep his eyes on the path ahead. In addition, a safety man must be in the cockpit, ready to apply the brakes. When the rules are compromised, a squadron may get by for a while. But sooner or later, something like this happens as shown by a photo record of an actual accident. $30,000 damage to two props and one engine because a pilot decided to go it alone. Or this one, an accident which cost the Navy over $900,000.
It started as a simple towing job. A director who was an experienced second class. A licensed tractor operator. Two wing lookout. To be sure, it was a routine towing job. But no provisions were made for one important man in the towing operation. A brake rider in the cockpit. While the aircraft was under tow, the tow bar shear pin snapped and the plane plunged over a six foot seawall after rolling 70 feet down a slight incline. Use qualified men. Granted, such men are not easy to come by. They must be trained. A squadron has no justification in risking this, a three quarter million dollar investment with this, an NC-5 driven by an unqualified, irresponsible operator. Use of servicing vehicles in the immediate vicinity of aircraft is of course a necessity, but it is inherently dangerous. Misused by unqualified operators, these vehicles become instruments of destruction. A chief who disregards the qualifications required for a job when he assigns a man is inviting an accident. Even though he carries a license, this man considers the NC-5 a Navy issue hot rod. And he drives it as if he were at a drag meet. Then he violates a standard operating procedure. Never back an NC-5 into position. The race course ends here. A small dent representing several hundred man-hours of repair work before this plane flies again. The NC-5, like all vehicles used around planes, must be operated with skill and judgment. The driver must approach the aircraft at a slow, deliberate speed, at an angle, not on a collision course. He parks the vehicle at a reasonable distance from the plane and breaks it. He uses the full length of the cable, provided specifically for the purpose of keeping a safe gap between vehicle and plane. The operator must remain at the controls of his vehicle at all times while the engine is running. Supervise, really supervise. This is another fundamental axiom in ground operations. Officer and petty officer alike must assume personal responsibility in seeing that their men know and use safe procedures in their work. Supervision by officers is not necessarily limited to their immediate duties. An officer who sees a flagrant violation of safety procedures should take prompt action in any incident like this, where a vehicle is used as a ladder. Nowhere are the responsibilities of the supervisor more important than in the checkout and inspection of aircraft prior to engine turnup. His inspection must include a check of all tie downs, a check for loose objects on the mat that could be sucked into a prop or jet engine or thrown into a nearby aircraft, an inspection of jet intake. In unguarded moments, they seem to accumulate almost anything. Tools, bottles, even comic books. Failure to conduct an adequate inspection may result in something like this. A million dollar accident in this particular case. It started here. A frayed cable went unnoticed because someone skimped on a checkout. From here, the plane careened along this path and came to a battered end here. A total loss itself, it also damaged two other F-9s and destroyed two trucks, all because of a frayed cable and inadequate inspection.
Enforcement of squadron safety procedures must be part of supervision. Safety requires that personnel, when working around jet engines, remove from shirt pocket takes. And remove hats, too, or wear flight deck helmets. Failure of a supervisor to enforce these practices is damage to the compressor blades of a $50,000 engine for safe ground operations. Use enough men for the job. Use qualified men. And really supervise. They could be effectively applied only in conjunction with a thoroughgoing safety program that has the active support of the squadron commanding officer. As the responsible officer for all aviation safety, you must give ground safety its importance there in the total program and enforce this program, even if disciplinary action is necessary. But the command must assess its own responsibilities. Are its policies fostering a sound training program? Is good training being reflected in proper procedures on the line? And are these procedures being ensured with effective supervision? If not, then this man on the line is merely the last link in an unfortunate chain of circumstances that inevitably leads to an accident. The failure is not entirely his. It is a command failure. The word, the important word on safety did not read to the men on the flight line requires more than mute posters tacked on a bulkhead. It requires a safety program that gives full support to the experienced petty officers who supervise the work. It requires that all officers, not merely the safe existing problems, working to find practical solutions. Ground safety, all safety, demands a total war on accidents to ensure our investment in defense. Nothing less will do.